So in part two, we went over how trauma can actually be used to transform you and how some of the rituals for the Bene Gesserit actually opened up certain centers of their brain to create supernatural powers and abilities, right? In this one, in this installment, I want to go over some axioms that the Bene Gesserit live by, some of their philosophies that we can incorporate today into our daily lives. And I thought these were profound and really life-changing, simple, simple, wisdom-filled statements. So let's go over it now. So they say words are dead things. Truth changes. Evidence? What is evidence except those things you are allowed to perceive? That's what law tries to control. Carefully managed reality. Facts are fragile. Be warned. Understand nothing. All comprehension is temporary. Do not seek perfection. We need strength of character, not characters. To know a person well, you must know her limits. So let me say something here. What I found profound about some of the the doctrine within the Bene Gesserit is the fact that they are really a stickler for not understanding things or not thinking that you know everything. And this is so, so important if the goal is to always be adaptable. When you think you know something or when you think you've mastered something, you cut off other ways of thinking, other ways of solving the problem, other ways that you may need to respond to people, things, events, right? And why is that so dangerous? Because circumstances change. Conditions have variations to them. And if you're not in a state of mind where you're always thinking, I need to be malleable here. I need to learn what's going on here. I need to know what this moment is teaching me, what this moment has to teach me, then you're gonna miss the lesson you're not going to be able to respond appropriately, thereby giving you a result that you don't want or giving you a result that could have helped you that you missed because you thought you knew it all. So the Bene Gesserit doctrine is about not understanding or not thinking that you understand anything, that in every moment, in every situation, with every person that you meet, especially these men, you question everything. You don't make assumptions about what a man thinks or feels about you because another man thought or felt a particular way about you. Thinking that you know anything will hinder you. It will hinder your ability to see. It will hinder the accuracy of your assessments because in order to assess something, you have to say in your mind, I don't know. I want to see what this is. I don't know. I need to find out. All right. So let's move on here. Only when she is pushed beyond her tolerance will her true nature be seen. Before you begin your training, please consider this. In every lesson, you need to look for the method of exploitation. The MOE is a useful synthesized description of the system at hand and the most effective way to manipulate it. Whenever you study anything, you must think like a Bene Gesserit. You must ask yourself, how do I get what I want from this person or system? Or how can this system be made to benefit the sisterhood? What you want is power and security for the sisterhood and the furtherance of our standing objectives. In some cases, there is a suggested 
MOE or method of exploitation, but you should always try to come up with your own. Use your imagination and adapt to the situation. UGC, this is the operating system. This is the function of this whole sisterhood of blood, I call it, right? Is learning how to adapt to any situation. And the only way that you learn how to adapt to any situation is by understanding that you know nothing, that truth is transient. This is vitally important for us to get in our heads because there's a lot of women who are know-it-alls out here who are getting no results. How can you be a know-it-all and think you are knowledgeable and you're getting no results? Then what is it that you know? You know something that worked last year. That's what you know. You know something that worked for you five years ago. You know something that went well yesterday. But what about today? When I hear a lot of you talk about what you used to do or what you used to not have to be able to do, I'm saying you're stuck in a script. You're, you're stuck in a loop and you're unable to adapt and you get resentful. You get rigid, resentful, angry at the need to adapt, at, at facing the conclusion that you were smart two years ago and now, and now you're not, and now you're dumb. Now you have to relearn some things, but we have to embrace this. When you take truth too seriously, you will fail. That's what this doctrine is about. Truth is transient. Let's move on. We do not cling to the ancient illusions of honor and shame. Honor, shame, murder, suicide, or coping skills of primitive cultures, of limited, uneducated minds. Those who speak of honor and shame are but children. Those who kill for honor or die for shame are but animals. Revenge is for children and the emotionally retarded. We live at a higher level, at a human level. Loyalty is our spirit, for without loyalty, we are animals. Seek freedom and become captive of your desires, but seek discipline and find your liberty. Sacrifice is the only gift of value. Now let me repeat that last one. Sacrifice is the only gift of value. That is profound because I've said over and over again that to know if you are in a real relationship requires an element of sacrifice. If there is no sacrifice, you don't have a relationship. If there is no sacrifice, you don't have a person who's loyal to you. Sacrifice, sacrifice is the glue that brings value to any two people coming together. There must be a sense of sacrifice, some sort of sacrifice going on, or you don't have anything, you don't have a leg to stand on. You don't have anything worth holding on to either. So, goes on to say, laws to, su to suppress tend to strengthen what they prohibit. Again, what, what, what is a law? A law is set in place to constrain you, right? And anything that you feel that you can't do is usually, usually something that you want to do even more. So that's what laws do. It strengthens your desire to do the thing or to break the law. Ambition is a dream based in reality. Self-delusion is reality based in a dream. A Bene Gesserit is subtle. She does not scatter dirt nor act impulsively. The Bene Gesserit leave straight but subtle tracks and make no noise. A Reverend Mother does not hate herself nor does she love herself. Let me repeat that last line. 
A reverend mother does not hate herself, nor does she love herself. What does this mean, UGC? Because we talk about self-love all the time and how that's supposed to cure us of our emotional diseases like insecurity, uh, feeling inadequate, feeling invalidated, right? Feeling valueless. We are told that self-love cures this. But this last quote here is that a Bene Gesserit doesn't hate or love herself. She's neutral. She responds the way she needs to respond. The, the whole self-love thing will blind you, is what this quote means. If you are in love with yourself, you can't see the forest through the trees, right? You can't assess how you need to speak to people, when you need to walk away. You can't assess properly what your objective needs to be because you're in love with your self-image. You're in love with, with an illusion because what is self-image? What is your self-image? It changes from day to day. Today you look cute, tomorrow, tomorrow you're having a bad hair day and it's some, something else, right? So it's, it's up and down. So a Benny Jesuit says, you know, it's neither love nor hate with me. I, I exist. And that is where emotional stability comes from. That statement is the key to emotional stability. You're not in one extreme or the other because hating yourself is an extreme and loving yourself is also an extreme. 